Let's level up with leverage. This is something that I love talking about because it transforms your business once you get your mind around the fact that you do not want to be doing all things about real estate in your business. You can't scale that way. You can only do so many transactions in the year by doing everything, all the paperwork, all the, the running around, all the sign installs, all the paperwork writing and filing and, 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 right? So once you reach a certain level, now granted, I want you to learn all the steps of how to sell real estate. I don't want you to, to be unaware of what it takes because that's what I learned first and now I'm able to train, I'm able to offload and I know exactly what I need and when I need it and how much it should cost because I know how to do all the parts of selling real estate. I started from the bottom and worked my way up. So I want you to learn all the aspects of it, but I want you in the very beginning to have a mind of how am I going to scale this business? Because ultimately, if you don't scale, if you don't leverage, if you don't offload some of the tasks that it takes, then ultimately you're gonna be run ragged or you're, only, you're gonna hit a ceiling because there's only so much that you can do in a day, right? And it's important to be thinking about these things in the beginning as you're creating your systems and your processes and, and it's gonna turn your mind towards the things of like, oh, okay, eventually I can hire somebody else to do X, Y, Z. So that then it frees up my time to either spend more time with family or to do more lead generation and more selling of houses. So getting in this mindset in the beginning is super, super important. Now I want to talk about a couple things. You need to track your activities and what you want your daily per hour to look like. So what is your hourly rate? You know, and as a real estate agent, if you look at how many homes you sell, divide that by how many hours you work, you can figure out what your rate is. And as you'll see, if you're a brand new agent and, and or you are a solo agent doing all the things in all of your business, your hourly rate, if you truly looked at it and broke it down, is probably a lot less than what you want it to be. So that's why scaling and leveraging is so important because to be honest, things like printing flyers or you know creating a graphic for, for a marketing material, that's not the best use of your time. And that's something that somebody else could maybe be doing for minimum wage or just above minimum wage or whatever that might be. So if you don't want your dollar per hour as a professional real estate agent to be minimum wage, then you have to be thinking about how can you separate minimum wage tasks from the actual money making activities. So there's two ways that I want you to start thinking about leverage. And the first way is in your business. Let's talk about that. There are a number of things that over time I have added to you know, my team and leveraged off or offloaded certain tasks. And the first thing that I think is most important for your business is offloading administrative type work, like a transaction coordinator. Oftentimes you can find transaction coordinators that are, be, are willing to be paid once a transaction closes. So reaching out to, there's companies that do this, there's independent contractors that are transaction coordinators, that that's their sole job is to, they just um, help real estate agents with the paperwork on the back end. Because paperwork is, again, is it important in your business? Yes, paperwork and having, you know, everything, I's dotted and T's crossed is important, but it's not the best use of your time. So be thinking about when you're gonna make that first hire, take that first step into leverage, Think about hiring a transaction coordinator. And again, it doesn't have to be a salary person. It can be per transaction. And we call that a cost of sale, um, if that's the route that you're gonna go. Of course, you could hire somebody full-time just for you and invite them on your team and you can work out any, you know, which way to pay somebody that you would like. But I want you to not let that be scary for you, okay? Don't let the fact of, okay, what do I pay somebody hold you back from, thinking about and actually taking that first step to leverage out that type of work in your real estate business. So because here's the thing, Google, your best friend, can tell you what is the average that a transaction coordinator makes per deal, right? You can look that up online. You can also talk to other real estate agents that are utilizing transaction coordinators in your area. So don't be afraid of that. Lean into, okay, what would it cost? And then you can work the math backwards and figure out, okay, the average sale price, uh, you know, in my area is 
X, the average commission then is there for this. So, you know, if I paid a transaction coordinator 400 bucks or 500 bucks or 700 bucks, whatever that looks like, you can determine, okay, would getting back, let's call it 10 hours of your time per deal or five hours of your time be worth that 500 bucks for that transaction coordinator so that you could go call, make more phone calls or do more lead generation activities. So you have to start thinking of it as if you're a business owner, not as if you're an employee and thinking about, oh, that's just an extra expense. Yes, it's an expense, but it's an, an expense that's going to enable you to go make more money. Whereas normally some of us, you know, that if we're coming from W2 jobs, we just look at something that we have to pay for as, as purely an expense and, and it's just money at the, at the door, right? That's not how it works in business. If that thing that you're paying for truly helps you scale and do more business and therefore make more money. Transaction coordinator is the first thing. You can also hire an administrative assistant. That's also something I've utilized in my business and currently use. It's somebody that does other things in, in my business to kind of help me with emails or other you know miscellaneous things like planning events or helping me with staying in touch with my sphere on a regular basis because there's a lot of things, a lot of tasks that are involved with all of my systems and processes. So there's transaction coordinator who, you know, is, is really involved in the transactions and then an assistant that might help you with other things in your business. You can also think about hiring what I like to call a runner or a client care specialist who does things like going to your listings after you've got a signed listing contract and they, you know, go take the room measurements. They go make sure they have all the details about the home that you're gonna put in the listing. They might drop off flyers, pick up disclosures, set up, you know, the, the shoe covers and, and sign, um, you know, at your listings. So that's another thing that helps save a ton of time is someone that, you know, the errands that actually cause you to have to drive around and go do things, that runner position is also really key. The next thing is leveraging a showing assistant. You can have somebody show homes for you. And if you set proper expectations with buyer clients, this can be a really great partnership with someone. You can either pay them and say, hey, I'm gonna give you, you know, let's say 10% of, of my commission of being my showing agent in this, um, with this, these buyers. And that can look like them doing all of the showing of the homes and scheduling all of those showings and attending the, the home inspection. That working with buyers, those are the most time sucking activities that if you are able to offload that to a showing partner, again, frees up a ton of your time. Now on the, and on the listing side as well, in addition to the runner, you're going to hire great professional photographers, you know, and other vendors like that to, to do things really well. And you can have, you know, again, all of these things can kind of work together. Your admin assistant might be the person to call that photographer and set all of that up. So just be thinking that as you add value, people value to your business, it's going to help in more ways than one, which ultimately gives you more time for lead gen or more time with your family. Another thing in business, a couple things to think about is hiring a bookkeeper. That is probably one of my favorite things that I leveraged out so that that way I just send my bookkeeper all my receipts, all my you know commission checks, pay stubs, all of those things. They organize it, they create my PL, um, worksheets and my, um, you know, all of the financial documents that at, you know, both for me to look at on a monthly basis, but also to give to my accountant when it comes times for taxes, it makes life a million times easier. That's also something that um, is, is going to be great for you leverage wise. Now, those are some of the main things, you know, you just want to be thinking about that, that I use in my business currently that has enabled me to sell way more homes than if I'm just trying to grind and do it myself. Now, the next thing with leverage that's important that I want you to also be thinking about is leveraging in your personal life. Because here's the thing, right? We work to create and fund the life that we want to live. So when you think about some of the tasks that you do, you know, in your household, whether it's you or your spouse or your kids, whatever that looks like in your household, that are things that are not the best use of your time. It's not giving you quality time with your family, such as, you know, cleaning, maybe cooking or landscaping, yard work. So there's lots of things like that that maybe you enjoy it. And if you enjoy it, great. I'm not saying don't do the things that you love to do and, or take away from, you know, the service and, you know, the kindness and th that you give to your family, or maybe you do it together and maybe you're trying to teach and instill good habits for your kids. I'm not talking about all that. I'm talking about the things that 
you do on a regular basis that take a lot of time that you don't enjoy. That if you could get yourself in a mindset of, okay, it costs, let's just pretend $15 an hour to have my lawn mowed, to pull weeds and all of that, right? And on average, I spend two hours a week doing that or my husband does or whatever. And that's time away from family that I don't really enjoy doing. So then you think about, okay, that would be 30 bucks a week, let's say, if you had a landscaper come in once a week and do that. Think about, okay, $30 a week times four weeks, and is that worth it to you? Is that worth it on a monthly basis? Like, could you spend a little bit more time with your family? Could you go sell more real estate? You know, that's the type of mindset that you want to get into. So maybe that's cooking. And maybe you don't jump to hiring a chef but you can do things like meal services such as sun basket imperfect foods or instacart you know services that deliver dinner to you that's either already made or something that ingredients and the the recipe is already prepared for you so you don't have to think about that that also reduces the grocery shopping time or trips to the grocery store right so all of these things it might feel like that's so far out of reach or another expense, but just remember, we're trying to improve our lives, spend more time with our family, or we're trying to sell more real estate. And all of these things in our personal lives can eventually be removed so that way you can live the life that you wanna live. So a house cleaner, another thing too. I know for me, I don't particularly enjoy cleaning my house, and so I hire somebody to help me with that on a bi-weekly basis. So all of these things, again, are you gonna be able to implement all of them all at once? No, probably not, unless you're just already killing it. But think about what's the one chore in my house that I don't like doing that takes you know a decent amount of time that I could leverage off. And maybe, maybe doing some research and figuring out you know what what that would cost you and then figure out if it's worth it for you and if you could maybe leverage that off maybe you need help getting your spouse or your partner to get on board with you i know that was something for me you know the thought my husband was like why would we have you know meals delivered like like we can just make our own dinner and we can cook ourselves you know and so it took a little bit to plant that seed and water it to get him to be on board so maybe that's part of it too so all of these things just know that as you're making changes to your mindset and doing different things and running your business like a business owner and not an employee all of this stuff takes time. This stuff is not easy to just change your mindset around if you're not used to thinking this way. That's why I want to give you these scripts to go over in your head and these things to know to start making those changes. I want you to listen to this over and over again. I want you to start practicing the habit of leverage because honestly, if you aren't leveraging in your business, then the business is running you. I don't care what anybody says because the day you stop selling real estate is the day you stop making money. So if you can't figure out how to leverage and scale, ultimately you're not going to be able to grow as much as maybe you want to. And again, I'm not trying to tell you like what your dreams are or what you want to do. If you only want to sell, you know, a minimum amount of homes and you're okay with that and that's good with you and you love doing all parts of the real estate transaction, like great. But I have a feeling you have a growth mindset. That's why you're here. That's why you're listening to this. So embrace and push back on your old habits and your old way of thinking and start thinking like a business owner. And that's That first step is learning to leverage.